Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Radiology. Welcome to part three of our brain imaging course. Today, we're going to go over some of the basics about how to review brain cases on your own. Uh, we'll give you some uh, tips about how to approach these cases. Uh, we've covered a couple of topics already. We've already talked about modalities in brain imaging and how to choose an appropriate modality. If you haven't seen those videos, feel free to go back and check those out either now or after you've checked out this video. But on today's video, we're going to focus on some of the basics of reviewing cases on your own. So in general, when you're reviewing brain cases or any part of radiology in general, you need some sort of search pattern to guide the way you look for abnormalities. And what do I mean when I say search pattern? What I mean is you need a structured way where you look at things in the same way every time so that you can not miss things and kind of have a pattern by which you look for things. Now, you also need to know which images are useful for which purpose. So for that, you need to know a little bit about window settings, uh, which is sort of the brightness and contrast of the image. Image. You also need to know about reconstructions, like what are the planes you're looking at and how can those help you uh, in a different way. So here I have, I'm showing you a little bit about some CT images and I'm, we're going to talk a little bit about thickness of CT images. Now in the modern era, like most modern CT scanners have very tightly packed detectors, usually 0.6 or 0.7 millimeters. And then for, to make it easier for us to look at them, they're averaged into thicker slices to provide less noise. That way you can tell the difference between things like uh, gray matter and white matter. So on the left, you see an image. This is a five millimeter image, and you can tell the difference between gray matter here and white matter. You've got pretty good uh, contrast to noise here. You see the CSF, and it looks pretty nice. If we take the original images, so these are 0.6 millimeter images, same patient, same level. We have a lot more noise. It's much harder to see that gray and white differentiation. So those thin images are not as useful, particularly in the brain, to see the brain parenchyma. Now they can be useful for other things like looking at small structures in the bones. And so for most of the time though, if you're looking at the brain, you want to look at the thicker images. Now there are a variety of reformats that you'll see in your packs. So if you sit down at the packs, uh, you'll see like different ways that images are displayed. Uh, this on the left here is an axial image. So that's kind of sliced through across the long axis of the patient's head. And uh, this is the conventional plane. People are the most familiar with the axial plane. But you can also do imaging in the coronal plane, for instance, and this is parallel to the face. So this dashed line is showing you where this image is coming from or what the orientation is. And you can see the same structures, uh, only the image is being shown uh, as if the patient is facing you or as if the patient's looking at you. And you see the oh, you see an overview of different structures. You see the ventricles and the cerebral hemispheres here, temporal lobes. So you can see things a little differently. It can help you see different things. Now the sagittal plane is uh, very similar. If you see this yellow dashed line now, that's the sagittal plane. That's like cutting down the middle. And here you see just a sagittal image of the brain. And so you can see the corpus callosum and the ventricles there. This is parallel to the nose. And again, like each one has its relative strengths. And so this can give you different information. Now on CT scanners, these are not obtained separately. They're uh, they're just reconstructed from the original data that's obtained in one scan. So you're not getting three scans of each patient. It's just one scan. And this is just highlighting that here. Again, all of the reformats on a head CT are acquired in one acquisition. They're just processed into these different planes to help us with the interpretation. Now, when you're looking at a CT image, CT images are standardized to look at density or X-ray absorption, which is closely tied to the density. And these images are standardized uh, to a unit called Hounsfeld units or CT units uh, after the uh, inventor of the uh, CT, uh, Dr. Hounsfeld. Uh, each density has a standard value. And these are some of the standard values listed here. And so the machines are calibrated such that water is very close to zero, bone is over 1,000, air is minus 1,000 or minus 1024. And here you see a histogram. This is a histogram of all the voxels in a CT study. And you can see this is the air, like out here at minus 1,000. You can see fat, water, brain, and blood are pretty tightly packed in this middle region. And most of the time we need to focus on that. And that's where we get to window and level. Uh, bone and metal are far out here, you know, kind of like up to 1,000 uh, or more. Now, we need to control how much data that we're seeing because if we look at this whole range, we can't really tell the difference in fine structures. And this box right here is showing us the window and level. And now the, what we call the window 
in this case is the width of this box. And what this means is when we show the image, we're only showing the data that's inside this box. This number is the width of that box. So if we're showing from zero to 80, for instance, uh, the window would be, would be 80. Uh, now, another number that you'll frequently see is called the level. And the level is the center of that range of data that's being shown. And so here I'm showing you something with a level of 40. If the window is 80 and the level is 40, again, that means the range is from zero to 80, but that level is the center of that range. And everything that's below that range is going to be black. Everything that's above that range is going to be white. Uh, so we're only gonna see the center of that, of that range. So this is a key principle if you're reviewing CT to remember that if it's outside this range, you're not gonna see it. Now here's some different uh, window and level settings uh, with the histograms below. A lot of times we have to look at the brain. We'll use the window level that you saw on the previous slide, that 80 and 40. This is great for seeing gray matter and white matter, seeing the difference. But if you see all the bones are very bright, the fat and the soft tissues are very dark. Uh, so we're missing a lot of those things. Uh, so we'll have to look elsewhere if we want to see those. If you take a much broader window, so if it's much broader, so the window here is 2,500, the level is 300. We're now seeing the bones much better. So we're seeing those aerated structures there. We're seeing a little bit of the fatty soft tissues, but this is really to focus on, on bone and the sinuses, for instance. And finally, you can take a intermediate window here, such as 40, uh, level of 40 and a window of 400. Here we can see the eyes, the orbits, the extraocular muscles, the scalp and soft tissues. So this soft tissue window is much better for looking at those things. And so we'll tend to use all of these uh, throughout the course of an, interpreting a head CT. Now, when you're looking at a CT, I tend to start at the bottom and work my way to the top. Symmetry is really your great friend in neuroradiology because the sides should be similar. And then we're looking for gray and white differentiation everywhere. Once I've looked at the brain parenchyma, I tend to switch over to bone images and set to bone window. And again, I'll start from the bottom. I'll look at the soft tissue and bony structures. I'll look at the sinuses and orbits and calvarium. And then I'll use my reformats, my coronal and sagittal images to check my trouble spots. So we'll go through this a little bit more when we're going through a normal case. But the key is you need to have a pattern and you need to do it the same way every time. So when you're reviewing an MRI, you tend to have the same kind of strategy. You want to go through each sequence based on its strength. So we talked a little bit about different sequences and the different value that they added. Uh, when you look at a sagittal T1, you might talk, you might think overall about the brain position, the bones. When you look at diffusion, you're looking for stroke and water movement abnormalities. Flare is great to see masses and edema, really workhorse, like almost all of your abnormal pathology is going to be bright on flare. Similar to T2, only T2 doesn't have suppression, so it's a little harder to see the brain parenchyma, but it's great for soft tissues uh, and the orbits. Susceptibility or gradient, we're going to look at to look for blood or calcification. And our post-contrast T1, we're going to look at to look for abnormal enhancement. Thanks everyone for tuning into this video about the general approach to uh, brain MRI and brain CT. Uh, these are some of the general strategies you're going to use. In the next video, we're going to review a normal brain case. We're going to walk through some of those principles so that you can actually see what it's like. You'll have an opportunity to go to your web browser and check that out uh, on your own and follow along. So thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to check out the website, learnerradiology.com, and uh, you know subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we have new videos. Thank you.